Yeah, so here is the camera. Uh, as you can see, thanks to the ingress of water, she's a little blurry. There's some rust inside of her. So, uh, yeah, this is what the image is looking like on it. As you can see, it is not good. It's very milky. So, yeah. But anyway, back to it. Hello, ladies and germs. So, um, today I'm doing a favor for a friend. Um, his Unify G3 dome camera suffered water ingress. Um, yes, at some point I will dump the video in to show you how bad it is. But uh, um, we've got some pretty bad corrosion and water damage on the Ethernet port. It's not destroyed, so I'm going to clean that. And I am going to put some dielectric grease on it. And we're going to attempt to dismantle the lens assembly and clean out the center inside of her. All right. <clears throat> Let's just see here. So uh, what we're going to need now is some tools. So I have started using this because this is pretty damn handy. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. I think I want this one. There we go. It's incredible what you can find at the dollar store, right? All right, so here we go. Uh, let's get her apart. There are three screws on the bottom. Uh, I do believe that the bottom portion comes out, and then you have to dis uh, disconnect a lead to get into the... Uh, or to remove the uh, lens head. Personally, I've never fixed one of these before. It's going to be kind of fun. Do, 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 do. Join me on my journey as we learn today how to fix a Unify G3 dome cam. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, not sure about that. Okay, so now I need to get into her, uh, which means I will probably need a spudger or a razor blade. I can't do that. Rrr, can't roll the R's. I suck at that. <coughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Um, wow. Oh. Okay, good. That's thermal compound of some kind. Okay, so <clears throat> there we are into the first layer. You know, this is kind of like Dante's Inferno, right? Okay, headphones up so I can hear myself better. There we go. Yeah, I found that wearing uh, my gaming headset is actually really awesome for doing these videos. I can hear her so much better. All right, so let's get this guy apart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was listening to some Queen earlier in my skull and uh, it's amazing because I love Freddie Mercury's voice so I uh, can't wait to see the movie Bohemian Rhapsody I believe it's called it'll be pretty good okay so ooh, yeah you can see all the rust in here eh? Ugh, ugh. okay so let's see here Get those screws out what is going to hold you in I should be able to wiggle you free Nope, there's oh, there's a couple of screws right there, which means that this needs to come apart. And if we're lucky, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's see how she comes apart. Hmm. Is there a trick to it? It's just there's some kind of sorcery. I see a key. And I think I've got the key lined up properly. Let's see if we can get her apart now. Oh, I almost cut myself with this plastic blade. That is incredible. There we go. Okay. Nah, I got it started. It's good. Should just be able to pop apart now. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's water all through it. This is not good. Okay. <clears throat> so first things first. I would like to get this circuit board out. This whole thing's going to need a good alcohol scrub, ISO scrub, whatever you want to call it. There we go. So we've got that out. I need to remove this connector, which is a delicate little thing, and it's probably really content. Oh, it is. It's got corrosion and like, oh, it's got some good corrosion on it. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if you could see that. Look at the corrosion on those. Oh, that is not good. Right on the optical head on this thing. I can see some serious corrosion on here. Um, okay, so that's good. I'm, I'm going to tear it right down in nothing because um, we really do have to give this board a thorough cleaning. 
So yeah, let's remove the microphone. Let's see here. I'm gonna need my little teeny tiny tweezers here. Where did I put them? Okay, those aren't the right ones. I'm working on other things this weekend, so uh, I was actually this was a good opportunity because I I cannot make a video for you guys. But um, let's see here. I don't know where my sharp tweezers are at the moment. There we go. She's out. Okay, so we got one screw there. The other two screws on the other side. And can I get you out still? No, I cannot. What is holding you in? This is a good question. I don't want to manhandle it. Um, we don't need to damage it. Um, there. I think I got it. That was a little bit... Oh, it's a sleight of hand. Tricky to get her out. Okay. And I am going to remove this... Uh, Right there. Interesting. It's like t there's a button right there. I wonder what that button does. And there's a USB port. Hmm. Note to self. All right. So uh, I want to attack the lens first because that's going to determine where they're going to clean the rest of it. So um, here we go. Let's put this aside. We will clean this shortly. Uh, both sides are corroded. That is not good. Okay. So let's get into this lens assembly. So I'm looking here, and we've got these two screws right here. Uh, I do believe I've got a micro Phillips over here. Oh yeah, if it's like a charm. I am terrified to open this little thing. Let's see. Hopefully, the sensor assembly, because you, you can see all the rust there, eh? Like, look at all the rust. Um, there was water sitting in this thing for at least a week. Um... Which, note to self, I don't believe they're very waterproof. So if you put these outside, you're just asking for trouble. I know that it says indoor, outdoor, but I think it's outdoor within reason. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this poor sick baby apart. How am I going to get this out now? <laughs> I think I need my pokey tool. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Got this side. There seems to be something on the far side that may be a plug. Uh, right there, that's holding it. Um, I think it's a connector for the LEDs. Let's see, there we go. It is a plug. Good. Oh, yeah. So we got her open now. Uh, how does that look? Would you say that uh, she's a little euchred, eh? All right. Um, it is repairable because it's still working. Looks like there's a UV filter on here. Kind of weird. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's there's water all through this lens assembly. Ooh, it got right inside of it. That's not good. Okay, so first things first, I want to clean up the sensor board. All right, so we're going to get our ISO over here. I'm going to grab a little scrubby brush. Here we go. And, uh, mm -mm -mm. Make sure that my scrubby brush is nice and clean. Okay, there we go. And let's just uh, take some ISO, get it on here. We want to get as much corrosion off of this thing as possible. The sensor itself, um, that is going to need a good cleaning with a microfiber cloth in a minute. You've got to treat this thing like any camera. If you're into photography, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, when you've got digital SLRs, you typically need to very, very carefully clean the sensor. Because if you don't do it right as well, you will damage it. And then you're screwed. Okay, so there, um, we're getting to it. Wow, there's so much rust. Okay, let's get right into the port. Hopefully I can recover this port. It looks like there are a couple of burnt power pins, which is not good. Ah, uh, yes, she's coming clean. Alright. If you like ASMR, I guess that uh, the sound of this brush might be exciting to you, or relaxing, or whatever the hell ASMR is supposed to do. I don't really know much about it, just that it seems ridiculous. Um, I'm going to listen to a lady eating pickles with long fingernails, and she's going to crunch them in a creepy manner. Yeah, that, that's my opinion on ASMR. It's just weird. Okay, so yeah, the contacts on that are definitely doing better. Um, oh, man. This is some really fine work in here. Unfortunately, you ha do have to be a little bit abrasive here. Now, where did I put my little bottle of ISO? I do have a bottle over here somewhere. Oh, there's one sitting right here. I think I'm going to steal it. Okay, here we go. 
So I'm going to pour some ISO on here and rinse it. Don't care that I'm getting it everywhere. It smells good. Ah, it makes everything fun. Okay, so I've got this specifically for this purpose here. That's pretty. Okay, there we go. Okay, we can clean all this ISO off of here. I just use old toilet paper rolls, to be honest with you. It works really good. Okay, back at her. <clears throat> Alright, so, could not find my microfiber cloth, which kind of bothers me, but uh, we got some problems with the silk screening down here, actually. Is the water got underneath of it, and unfortunately for that, it has delaminated some of it. Now, you're probably saying, no, don't break the bubbles, why are you opening that up? Well, the problem is, is if you leave this, what's going to happen is, is if there is water contamination underneath, it's going to continue to fester and bubble and corrode and destroy the board. So, unfortunately, we do have to break the silk screening on this and uh, get into it and clean it. Okay, let's let's hope that uh, I got enough battery left to do all this. Okay, so <clears throat> there we go. So there's no schmutz on there. You never want to touch that with your finger. That's a pain in the ass to clean it up. Um, got some nice little paint brushes here, some new ones. So now that I've cleaned all this up and I've gotten all the corrosion off of the voltage regulator there and popped all the bubbles on here. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, well lit now. <clears throat> okay, so now that that's all done, um, usually I would use nail polish for this, clear acrylic nail polish, but I seem to be out at the moment. I have ordered all new supplies for all the stuff that I do, so it's going to take a bit of this pre-catalyzed urethane, and I am going to get a paintbrush here. Mix her up. There we go. And you definitely don't want to get this on the lens. On the, uh, I keep calling it a lens. It's a sensor. All those camera nuts are gonna friggin' lose their minds. Okay, so there we go. You want to especially get this into the voltage regulator there. There we go, and that should reseal the board nicely. Okay, so now all that copper is no longer exposed. There's no corrosion over here on the contacts for the LEDs, but I'm going to put a little bit of. Uh, dielectric grease in there. In the meantime, I'm going to make sure that all the components, especially on the back of this board, are conformal coated so that uh, any additional water ingress will not uh, damage them. And on another note, oops, sorry, I didn't show you guys that. On another note, um, if you leave some of this stuff exposed to air and it's already been corroded once, it'll be screwed in the future. So just keep that in mind. So there we go. So this is all coated. It's clean. When this urethane dries, I'm going to run a paintbrush over this and make sure I get all the rest of the crap off of here. This, as you can see, it's getting crap on it. I am very, very nervous about these things because they are very, very sensitive and you must keep them very, very clean. Of course, I'm not a camera expert. I do like photography, as you probably already know, but uh, I'm sure I could learn a thing or two about this. So that looks amazing. Okay, so this I'm going to put this guy aside. Uh, when we're ready to put it back in, we will put some um, dielectric grease on the connectors in that for it. Uh, this guy here, because it's pre-catalyzed, it will probably turn to hell shortly. Um, so I'm going to take my paintbrush here. Dip it in some ISO, and uh, there we go. That'll get the urethane out of it. There we go. All right, so it's ready for the next board to coat. Okay, so now we're working our way down. So now let's take a look over here at this guy. As you can see, this is there's a hell of a lot of rust in here. Um, let's see how it comes apart. Okay, so this is a little track that it rotates in. Let's see here. I presume I can just pop it out, maybe. Um, maybe not. Maybe it does not come out easily. Uh, it might be keyed. Let's let's see if I can 
There we go, it is keyed. Awesome. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to clean the plastics first, and then we're going to work our way through the, the lens assembly now. Um, so I'm going to get some... Uh, I'm going to get my other brush over here, my coarse brush, for cleaning out all this crap. Ah, oh, there is a lot of rust in here. Okay, so that's all the rust out of there. Um, rust is definitely not good. Iron oxide, right? It's conductive. Gets into things and destroys it. Okay, so that's clean now. Put that aside. Um, let's look over here. This guy definitely has some rust on it. Uh, that I'll just use a little bit of TP. I would have thought they would have used stainless steel parts and uh, for this camera, considering how much they're worth, right? These are like expensive little cameras. But uh, apparently they don't. So this will get some grease on it before it goes back in. This is the... Uh, ring that goes underneath here so it slides around okay so now we need to get inside of here so I'm gonna go back to using my teeny tiny little screwdriver here and that teeny tiny little screwdriver is where did I put her right over here great okay let's dig in are you following along folks there we go I hope this video turns useful for somebody. That's why I make these. So you guys can learn things. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, oh, come on. You're gonna come. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. There is a buttload of rust in there. Jesus. Look at that. Oh, it's just this LED nut at the bottom seems to have taken the brunt of the water. Um, hopefully we can save it. I don't want to have to like desolder it or do any of that crap. I'm kinda lazy today. It's Sunday. So, being that it's Sunday, I just want to kick back and relax. But, you know, a friend in need and all that crap. It's just like, ugh. You got something broken? Let me know. Let's see what I can do for you. Okay. Let's get all this shit out of here. It looks like it dried out a fair bit, which is kind of good. Okay, I am going to... I'm going to get a cotton ball. Let's see here. There's my cotton balls. Cotton balls are great for electronics. There we go. Get in here. Do, 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 do. Get the majority of the filth out. There we go. Essentially, when this thing goes back together, it needs to literally be like brand new. Okay, there we go. So I've got the majority of the rust out of this part. I am going to give it a quick cleaning here. There we go. Get rust out of it. There we go. And now I can take a little bit of this and just finish it off. There we go. Now uh, we'll take another cotton ball in here. This is the boring part. Yay! See, the nice thing is, is when shit's not broken but it's contaminated, it's basically just a, a mage job, you know? It's like you just clean it and make it pretty again so that it was functional. And there's nothing screwing with it. All right, this piece can go aside now. It goes into the pile of completed parts. All right, so moving along. Um, here we go. This is what worries me. All right. And what really sucks is that this lens is epoxied in place. They found the sweet spot and they put it there. And I don't know if I feel comfortable just taking that off. So... I think what we'll have to do is I'll have to actually break that epoxy and get this lens out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that's actually a good thing to work with because now the epoxy is uh, going to act as a stop and I can do my fine tuning after um, as I'm putting it back together. Okay, so here we go. There's a little tiny motor in here apparently. Uh, it looks like that is a iris control. That's pretty cool that this little thing has an iris in it. I'm just presuming it's an iris. 
Alright, there we go. I'm getting all the rust off of the board, because rust destroys things. Yay! Okay. Alright. Yeah, that's got the most of it. Get all the rust out of there. This one got hit kind of hard, too. As long as all the moisture is out of it, too, it's not going to continue to degrade any. It's just it's so critical that there's uh, no moisture left on the board. This one here, I'm going to coat it as well as soon as I'm done. I'm going to get uh, the rust off of there. There's another lens. Um, so that's one I'm going to be very careful with, because if you get a little bit of schmutz on it, they're a pain in the ass to clean. Okay, here we go. Man, there's water all inside of this assembly here. I'm hoping that I can get to all of it. Yeah, and there's some more uh, s uh, silk screening that's come off. Uh, I call it um, board. There's a PCB masking, I think. Yeah, look at the water in there. Wow, she's just coated. Yep, yeah, okay. That's a lot of water. This cotton ball is done. On to the next one. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's sexy. That's a sexy sound of something being squishy cleaned. Alright, so that's just a preliminary cleaning. We still need to get a Q tip on there. And yeah. There. We're just getting all the general shite off of here. A little bit on the threading here. There we go. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. And then we'll take a Q-tip. Get that really shiny. And if any of you do photography, you know how much it sucks when you get a tiny little contaminant inside of a lens. And then uh, you're going to shoot and you're like, oh, I need to update my... Uh, my noise uh, filter, or whatever the hell they call it. I can't remember what it's called on there. Noise mapping. There we go. Alright, that's pretty clean. I can go over there now. Now, in here is the part that really bothers me. Okay, so I... Down here in this uh, iris... Actually, it doesn't look like an iris. Um, I'm not sure what that is. But it's right there. Um, there's two screws anchoring that. So, um, hmm, maybe I should take the LED off of here and further clean it. That would probably be a wise thing to do. And there we go. Okay, here we go. Right, yeah, there, it looks like a little motor. Maybe it's a little heater or something. Yeah, it looks like an iris motor. Um, that's strange. So let's see what we're working with here. There's a silicone seal on that. That's really good. There is so much water in the threading on this, which is really not good. Okay. There. Okay, that's got most of it out. So that's a prelim just to get the water out of it. Uh, now we need to get in there and actually clean it. Oh, the squeaky sounds of awesomeness. Ooh, yeah, it's shining up nicely. Sparkle like a diamond. Uh, let's see here. Looks like there's crap on the back of it, too. Oh, hello, do you move? That's what it's for. I see now. So this little thing moves. Isn't that just lovely? Which means I'm going to have to slide it over to actually clean the whole thing now. Great. Okay, I'm going to go to a new Q-tip now. Where is it? There's a new one. Okay, so... Um, oh, yeah, there's water all through it. Look at that. 
that's that's a kind of clever assembly. It's got like an infrared filter in there, and then it's got the uh, standard clear lens on that as well. That is really interesting. I hope I can get this whole thing apart because it looks like I'm going to have to if I'm going to get this little motor cleaned up. I don't like taking things apart to this point that I haven't played with before. So there we go. Wow. They were really clever when they worked on this little thing. Let's get the rest of the schmutz off of here. Mm. There we go. Yeah, there we go. She's nice and clean now. Okay, so this point uh, part here, we can put that aside. Now we're on to this interesting little motor assembly here, which is probably loaded with water which is a bit of a problem because uh, if I can't get inside of it and get the moisture out then the moisture is just going to accumulate again and uh, we all know what happens if you get moisture that builds up inside of something just sits there All right, so there we go, I've got most of the crap off of here, you got to be careful, you don't want to scratch that glass of course so let's see here There we go. Here's that. Yeah, that's where all the contamination is. It's all in this white lens. This clear lens. Wow. Yeah, hopefully there's no rust buildup inside of here. I really hope there's no more moisture inside of this thing. Because this is a real dog to clean. I don't even know if I can actually get way down in there. I might have to use one of these little brushes. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, that's working. A little bit more ISO. And I just have to make sure I get all the hairs out of that perfectly. There we go. Come on, move. Of course, when I want it to move, it won't move. Now, well, we're going to use the heat gun on it now. I'm going to turn this way down, by the way. I want it around maybe 80. Oh, I guess the lowest it'll go is 100. That's fine. Okay, so... just want to warm it up. I don't want to burn it. And this will draw the moisture out, because now that there's ISO in it, ISO mixes with the water, reduces the evaporation point of the water itself, and then when you heat this little guy up, it'll evaporate out of there, carrying all the moisture with it. Neat little trick, eh? I'm not sure if that's a motor or a solenoid either. It could be a solenoid on that thing. Let's see how warm that is. Yeah, it's getting nice and hot. Nice. I get a little bit warmer. So this would be the main reason why this whole thing was blurry. Was just because this little lens assembly here got contaminated. It's like, it's a filter. That's exactly what this thing is. Um, so what this is, is it has your... Um, infrared filter on it and then it's got just a regular pass through and I'm pr I presume while this is running that infrared filter is in place during daylight and when it gets dark it puts the clear filter on place or just a clear lens so that uh, essentially the uh, light just passes right through it there we go and that should get it all out all right, bear with me a moment. I am going to run and grab another couple of Q-tips. Moving on, I did clean up these LEDs. I gave them a little alcohol bath, and now I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to put some pre-catalyzed, whoops, pre-catalyzed uh, urethane in here. And I am going to take that, and I am going to paint these parts with it. And uh, 
This will ensure that if there's water ingress again, that it will not screw up. Uh, I think with most electronics, they should be conformal coated. I mean, it does make it a pain in the ass to try to repair them afterwards because uh, you kind of, when you're soldering this stuff, it just does not work well with the solder. Um, so afterwards, you kind of need to pick it and scrape it off or put solvent on it to get it off. Otherwise, it just won't, you know, won't cooperate. So there we go. So that's that off of there. I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on those terminals after. So here we go. I'm going to, here we go, just, yeah, just paint that onto all the components. There's some little uh, FETs in here, little FET packages. There we go. And I don't know how well that's going to seal, because uh, actually these LEDs are each in a stand. It's like a little standy thingy that points the LEDs all in different directions. Uh, by the way, these are amazing cameras, by the way, for the money that you have to pay for them. They're actually not terrible. Um, they are on the cheaper end of the spectrum, but not in a bad way. Okay, so there we go. So this is all conformal coated now. I'm going to get a little bit of alcohol on here. Get that out of there, too. Okay, there we go. Okay, you're back in there. There's my solvent. Okay, so that's good. So now I'm going to get that dielectric grease like I was talking about. Hopefully it doesn't squirt out all over the place. Good, it didn't. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get a little brush. I had a little brush picked up for it, this blue one. So I'm just going to get a little tiny bit of this on here. We don't want too much because sometimes it can actually interfere with the uh, electrical operation of a device. So I'm sticking this all inside of these pins. And then when I reassemble the camera, like I was mentioning before, um, this little guy here, those are the connectors, so that will clean it. Up. So, or, sorry, not clean it. That will put the... Uh, the grease, the dielectric grease into those slots to make sure that they're good. So this board here, uh, actually, sorry, before I do that, I'm just going to quickly get all the dead fruit flies out of here. In the summertime, we have horrible fruit fly problems in this building. The building is just loaded with them. It's lousy with them. Okay, get the rust out of here. There we go. That's good. Okay. I'll just take a little bit of toilet paper. Yeah, this is superficial, really, in here, but ultimately, anywhere that there's electronics, you don't want iron oxide. It's not good. It's not good at all. Okay, here we go. Yeah. That's definitely cleaner. Okay. Microphone's fine in this because it actually has, like, a little membrane over it. Okay, so that goes back in the corner. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more and dielectric grease on here for a couple of other parts in a minute, which you will see. Okay, um, this board is mostly clean, um, but I'm going to give it a little bit of an alcohol bath anyway, and then I'm going to put some more pre-catalyzed urethane on it. So, let's see here. Yep, we're good. So, just give it a little bit, bit of a bath. This way, if there are um, any contaminants on here, like any um, corrosion that I can't see, it will get it all off. Now the socket on this... Oh, and by the way, there's your... Uh, where is it? There is a uh, TVS diode on here somewhere. I saw it earlier. I think it's a, that's a full-wave bridge rectifier, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. I know I saw I think it's somewhere right there. There's a TVS diode on everything made by Ubiquiti. Which is pretty awesome, if you really think about it. It's a great idea. Um, protect your Ethernet PoE devices from... Uh, Power surge. Okay, there we go. So that's all that. Uh, the SD slot looks clean. This, this port right here is where I'm a little bit concerned. Um, it does have rust. It has rust in it. Okay, there we go. I need to get in there with a uh, this one here. This is my... I'm going to clean something abrasively. Brush. There we go. I want to get every little bit of rust out of this connector. There we go. That's pretty good. Compressed air works even better for that.
Alright, so now that that's clean, I'm going to put a bit of dielectric grease in here on these conductors, these pins in this RJ45. And the last thing I'm going to do to this little guy here is I am going to, put this aside of course, uh, I am going to conform I'll coat it. So I'm just going to make sure I don't go over any connectors because you'd never want to do that. This chip here needs to be coupled thermally to the back plane because it needs to cool itself against the chassis. That's the trick that these guys are using. It's kind of smart. Lots of people do that. Okay, so let's see here. There's the RAM. It's got some RAM on it. Yeah, well, I guess so because it does have a web server on it, right? Duh. Okay, so here we go. Get rid of some of these fine bristles. I think I need just a little bit more of this stuff. There we go. In case you're wondering, this is the stuff I'm using for this application. Um, sometimes I use pre-catalyzed urethane. Sometimes I use pre-catalyzed acrylic enamel. It really does depend on the environment. Uh, urethane is really, really good for environments where, where there's wild temperature fluctuations and um, you don't want your conformal coating to crack it's kind of flexible um, you can also actually use um, silicone believe it or not in some applications uh, I've also used epoxies uh, when I'm using acrylic uh, let me see if I've got the acrylic anywhere nearby ah here's one this is the acrylic that I use for um, conformal coating okay so there we go. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to clean that socket last, because I did check the socket, and it is really in good shape. So I'm not too concerned about that one. Now the cable, on the other hand, that is not in great shape. So, uh, there we go. We don't want to contaminate the socket with this stuff. It will suck if we get it on the pins. There we go. There we go. Again, the key here is to make sure that all the components pins and contacts all have a nice little layer of urethane. Yay! We're painting friendly little clouds today, folks. There we go. So especially power components, you want to get this over them. Because that's where you get your corrosion. And that's where things die! Okay, so... Alright, this is ready to sit aside and cure. So, how much time do I have left? i got 8 minutes and 27 seconds on my video. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside to cure. And then, um, the last thing that I really need to rep uh, clean is this little cable here. Now, we did soak this in some ISO. It's got some angel hair leads on here, what I used to call them when I worked for Bell. And, um, yeah, so I soaked it in some ISO for a little bit to try to get these um, connectors cleaner. So you can see there, there's a bit of corrosion in there. Um, so now that it's soaked for a bit, I'm going to take my abrasive brush here, and I'm just going to get in there, and I am going to brush with the pins first. And I'm going to go against them. There's no particular order. You can see there's that one pin in there. I can tell that that's a power pin because it's uh, corroded so badly. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's, it's mostly coming off, yeah. Going back and forth to get that stuff, and then here, go up and down. There, that's way better. There we go. Okay, so this guy's ready to go nice and clean. Now, actually, I kind of lied earlier because there is somewhere else I need to put some of this dielectric grease, and that's along these pins here. Now, I bet you you don't see many people putting dielectric grease on little high-density con uh, connectors like that, but in this situation, there is corrosion on them, and realistically, if you don't tend the corrosion with something that will uh, mitigate it, it will continue to corrode even once it's cleaned up. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, the conformal coating is dried on this board. I now have my dielectric grease in the connectors. The last thing I will need to do is... Uh, before I reassemble it is make sure that that sensor has not a speck of dust on it. Okay, I think we're good. Alright, since you guys saw how I tore it down, um, uh, do I really want to put it back together on camera? Um, I don't know. Alright, maybe we should, just for shits and giggles.
here we go so uh, let's see here LED ring goes in there like so awesome that goes there um, this goes onto the shutter assembly like so I believe yes it does okay and then uh, the last thing I'm gonna have to do is probably carefully uh, check the calibration on the camera because I did remove the lens on it right and uh, what they do in the factory with a lot of these cameras is they will adjust the lens um, by tightening it or loosening it against the socket and um, then they'll fix it in place with epoxy there we go I think I got it oh these things are so easy to dirty up okay there we go so that's assembled now um, the lens itself is right here I want to make sure there's not a speck of dust on this thing. Let's see, I'm going to put this over here. So we're just going to uh, clean any contamination off of the threading. Ugh. There we go. There's a little bit of cotton threading on here. Um, let's put it back together. Hopefully, we'll be lucky. And I won't have to screw around with it much to calibrate it. There we go. I think, I think, I think, I think, yes, actually, this is perfect. There's, uh, it actually took the form of this, so right there, that should be perfectly calibrated now. All right, so this, this is, this was the problem. Um, now that this is all back together, I can actually, let's see here. Uh, which way did I put this one on? I think that this will pretty much explain itself once I, uh, with this together, so we'll slide the lens assembly in place. goes on there there we go all right so there we go it kind of put itself together now I could put these little last screws in here there we go we got these little guys right here and uh, I might put a little tiny bit of um, I might put just a little tiny bit of uh, dielectric grease on them now actually was it these ones I think it was actually the black ones that went in there oh no no that's right it was these ones so this one's a little bit rusted so a little bit of grease on it just to stop the rust from continuing okay three minutes left of recording uh, on that memory card hm. this is a long bloody video I guess it was because I mean like you know this uh, pretty big job tearing something down to its finer bits and then reassembling it there's one this one's not as badly rusted so I don't need to worry as much about it we shall put that in there. Big fat fingers. Okay, there's that one there. There we go. And then this goes in right... Oh, I don't even need that on there. Right in here. This is for the uh, shutter. There we go. And I could have put that on before, but I didn't. It doesn't matter anyway. It's on there. Okay, we'll put this all back together. So there we go. That's the lens assembly, the actual video sensor and everything back in place. And now we can remount this. So I believe this goes on here like so. Let me just see here. Let's pop this ring in here first. I wish I was going to put a little bit more dielectric grease on this. Um, where am I? There we go. Nothing wrong with just a little bit of lubricant when there was rust on it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's that. Just put all that aside. Let's put this back in here. Get in there. Okay, there we go. That is now in there. Uh, let's make sure that the wires are all out of the way. There we go, and 
Yes, I believe that the... There we go. That should be fine now. Okay, and then we pop this guy back on. And... Ah, there we go. It goes like that. Okay, so that's in the center. Okay, that should pop back on. Just pop it back together. Get in there. There we go. All right, she's back together. Oh, other side. There. You can adjust it again. There we go. Now it's back completely together. All right, so that's back in place. Good. I remember, there's your keys. Okay, so this is all back together now. And I should be able to... Uh, get the... Well, I'll put the cord in in a second. So, where did I put the... Here's the cord for it. Um, this is the top piece. And this is the bottom piece. And they are much, much better. I'm going to put a little bit more dielectric grease on this part here. There we go. Can't wait to test this little bad boy. This will be cool. Okay, so I can plug it back in. There we go, with this bad boy here. So I'm going to lie this in here like so. There we go, and it should just click into place. Okay, so that's clicked back into place, ja. Alright. Now, <coughs> that piece will now go through here. Like this. It's actually really clever that they made this thing all black inside. Okay, make sure it's clean, of course. And... Click! There we go. Back in place. Okay, now... Now, now, now. We can... Slide this little bugger back together. And try to get everything lined up perfectly, because that's the trick. I think once you get the Ethernet port in right there into its little clippy holders... Um, everything else will follow suit. There's a clip over here that holds it too, so I think you need to kind of pop the... Yeah, that made it easier. If you line up the Ethernet port first, uh, everything else just kind of falls into place. Okay, so that's together. Let's, uh... At least these are really well thought out cameras if you really look at it. Because, um, all this matte black interior stops reflections and light, uh, getting into the back of the sensor. Which is probably pretty unlikely, considering how packed in it is. But, uh, you know, it's just good that they actually thought about that. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's a really thoughtful design. Okay, we got this little guy back in. There's one more screw left, and then the bottom plate assembly is back into position. Okay, the microphone cable is plugged in. It's out of the way, so now... I just need to go back and uh, put these two screws in that I forgot. And then as soon as I'm done that, we will get to testing the thing. So please stand by. Okay. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, I've uh, this is the image now that it's all cleaned up. Nice and sharp and crisp and not all milky and blurry like it was before. So it looks like... Uh, She's good to go. Pretty cool, eh? There you go. That was a hell of a tower down. Anyway, have a great night, folks.